Chapter 35. A Special Meeting. We were storing the travel equipment and seeing to the service animals when I heard a friendly voice beside me. Andre, it's you. Well, well, what a pleasant surprise. Startled, I turned around and realized that the Samaritan who was talking was Silvira, an old acquaintance of mine on earth. My father, an inflexible businessman, had taken all of his material assets from him. Therefore, it was natural that I felt embarrassed at seeing him. I wanted to acknowledge his greeting, to respond to his friendly gesture, but the remembrance of the past rendered me speechless all of a sudden. I could not pretend in this new environment where everyone could tell if you were being sincere just by looking at your face. Finally, Silvera himself noticed my discomfort and helped me out. Frankly, I didn't know you had left your physical body, and I didn't have the slightest idea I'd meet you here in Nasalar. Noticing his spontaneous kindness, I was deeply moved and embraced him, murmuring words of gratitude. I wanted to offer some sort of explanation about the past, but I couldn't. I wanted to apologize for my father's actions, which had forced Silvera into bankruptcy. At that moment, it all came back to me. My memory once again showed me a living picture from my past. It seemed like I was listening to Mrs. Silvera pleadingly trying to explain the situation when she had visited us. Her husband had been ill for a long time and worsening their plight. Two of their children had also fallen sick. Their expenses had risen, and medical care was very expensive. The poor woman was weeping and begging for a deferment. She humiliated herself, gazing pitifully at my mother, as if trying to find understanding and help in the heart of another woman. I remember how earnestly my mother pleaded with my father to forget the documents he had signed and to refrain from any legal action. My father, however, who was accustomed to large-scale transactions and was favored by luck, couldn't grasp the shopkeeper's situation. He was adamant. He stated that he was sorry for what had happened, that he would help in different ways. But as for the debts, there was nothing he could do but go ahead with the legal proceedings. He explained that he couldn't even consider breaking the long-established regulations of his firm. The promissory notes would have their legal consequences. He tried to console the afflicted wife, saying that there were other clients who were in an even worse situation than Silvera. I remembered my mother's sympathy towards the unfortunate, tearful woman. My father remained indifferent to her entreaties, and after the poor woman had taken her leave, he scolded my mother severely, forbidding her to interfere in any more business matters. The poor family suffered utter financial ruin. I recalled perfectly the moment Miss Silvera's piano was being carried away to satisfy the last claims of the implacable creditor. I wanted to apologize, but I couldn't find the right words, for at the time I had encouraged my father and his ruthless attitude. I considered my mother too sentimental in her views, and I encouraged my father to prosecute Silvera to the finish. As I was still very young, vanity had taken hold of me. I wasn't interested in the suffering of others, nor could I see their needs. I thought only of the rights of my own home, nothing else. And in that regard, I had been unyielding. Any maternal exhortation was useless. Defeated in the struggle, the Silveras moved to a small town and lived in poverty and suffering. From that moment on, I never again heard mention of the family, which surely hated us. These memories had flashed through my mind within seconds. In only one moment I had recalled my dark past, and while I could hardly disguise my despondency, Silvera smilingly called me back to reality. Have you been visiting your old man? His question, so filled with spontaneous caring, only increased my embarrassment. I answered that I had not yet had the satisfaction of visiting my father, in spite of my wish. So Vera sensed my constraint, and perhaps seeing how upset I was, he prepared to leave. He gave me a polite hug and went back to work. Very disconcerted, I looked for Narcissa, anxious to receive her advice on the matter. I told her what had just happened, giving details of our earthly relations. After listening patiently, she remarked kindly, Don't be surprised. A long time ago I found myself in a similar situation. I have already had the satisfaction of meeting most of the people whom I had offended in the world. Today I know that the Lord blesses us with new opportunities to rekindle friendships that have been interrupted. Thus, 
repairing the broken links in the spiritual chain. And pressing her teaching a bit further, she asked, Did you take advantage of the situation? What do you mean? I inquired. Did you ask Silvera to forgive you? Remember, it is a joy to be able to recognize our wrongs. Since you were able to examine yourself in the light of understanding and identify yourself as an old offender, don't pass up the opportunity to gain a friend. Go, my friend, and embrace him differently. Make the most of the opportunity offered to you, for Silvera is a very busy man, and you may not get another chance very soon. Noticing my indecision, Narcissa added, Don't be afraid. Whenever we follow our head and heart in the practice of good, Jesus grants us the help necessary to succeed. Take the initiative. Accomplishing worthy actions, whatever they may be, represents a real honor for the soul. Keep the gospel in mind and go seek the treasure of reconciliation. I didn't hesitate. I ran after Silvera and talked to him openly, begging him to forgive both my father and me for the errors and offenses of the past. You see, I affirmed, we were both blind. In such a state, we couldn't see anything but our own self-interests. Whenever money and vanity are involved, Silvera, it is difficult for a person not to take the wrong path. Silvera was deeply moved and didn't let me finish. Now, now, Andre, is anybody free of sin? Do you think that I led a blameless life? Besides, your father was actually a good teacher, and we owe him, my family and I, for blessed lessons in individual effort. If it had not been for his strong attitude in taking away our material assets, what would have become of us in terms of our spiritual progress? Here, all our old concepts of human life are changed. Our adversaries are not our enemies. Actually, they are our benefactors. Don't brood over those sad memories. Let's work with the Lord, acknowledging that life is endless. And looking at my moist eyes, he gave me a fatherly hug and concluded, Don't waste time on this. Before too long, I want to have the pleasure of visiting your father with you by my side. I embraced him without a word, feeling new joy in my soul. It seemed that in a dark little corner of my heart, a divine light had been turned on forever.